For the first part of the problem, our goal is to find the surface charge density for this uh, charge configuration that we have over here. And more specifically, we'll begin with a, a neutral conducting sphere that has a radius of R right here. And it has uh, two cavities, one of them that has, we can zoom in, one of them that has a radius of A. And inside that cavity right here, there is a charge right here in the middle that we'll just call uh, QA, so it's a positive QA here. And on this other charge here, um, that's just located an arbitrary distance away from that one, uh, it had, the cavity has a uh, radius of B, and it has a charge right here in the middle that we'll call charge B. And again, zooming back out, our goal is to find the surface charge density at all these different locations. Number one, what's the surface charge density on the inside of the sphere here? and then inside of this spherical cavity here, and then finally on the outside of the total uh, large uh, conducting neutral spherical uh, um, conducting sphere here. <laughs> All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go after this one right here, though, the QA. And if you recall, um, whenever you place a uh, charge here in QA, if this is a neutral conducting sphere out here, uh, what this is gonna do is uh, when you put a charge here, it's gonna draw in charge uh, it's going to draw in electrons from around the, the, the free electron in this, in this conducting sphere only because it's conducting uh, so that it has enough charge on the outside so it uh, perfectly neutralizes the, uh, the electric field or the, the charge that's uh, in here. So on the outside there's going to be a total charge of negative, negative QA distributed on the outside of the charge here. And remember, uh, whenever that negative charge gets accumulated right here, an equal and opposite charge gets accumulated on the outside of the sphere here. And so then you'd have a positive uh, QA on the top here. So, but going back to the surface charge density on the inside of the sphere, so that's just going to be, if we think about the, um, the actual definition for surface charge, so it's just the charge divided by the area distributed across the area. And since we just said that there is a charge that's equal and opposite to the QA that's being distributed around the outside of here, we can say that the charge here is actually just QA, negative QA, divided by the surface area that's on the inside here, which is just uh, 4 pi uh, a cubed. There we go. And so that's our answer for this one. And for the second part, we're going to do the same thing for the second cavity here. It's the exact same thing. A negative amount of charge gets accumulated right here. That's equal and opposite to QB. And then a positive amount gets distributed around the surface area right here. This one, so for this one specifically, the if we look about the, the same um, way that we did this problem, so it would be negative QB over 4 pi B cubed. And then finally, for the surface area for this one, uh, nothing really special happens thanks to the, super, uh, the principle of superposition whenever you have multiple charges or multiple uh, induced charges being pushed out. We'll just have a total charge of uh, positive QA that gets induced, that gets uh, induced on the, uh, on the outside of the sphere here, and then a uh, positive QB that gets induced on the outside of this um, on this sphere here. So we just add them together over here for a total charge, QA plus QB divided by the surface area that we have on the outside, which is four pi r cubed here. And uh, that is the uh, surface area for the first part of this problem.